To learn about resistance and support lines, they're as easy as they sound, all right? So we're going to use this example here, and then I will uh, actually look at a real stock. I'll actually look at an ETF. Uh, we'll, we'll do um, the S&P for this example, but this is pretty much resistance and support lines. So if we have ticker XYZ, our fake little company, here's its chart, right? It's going up like this. And what we could do is we could, uh, we could kind of predict where some resistance and support lines are. So it's, it's no surprise right here that the stock started to go down because that's what happened back here. It hit this imaginary resistance line and it started to go back down. And same is true for here and here. It's no surprise that it bounced right here because if we look back here, it did the same. So let's add in some resistance and support lines. And now we could uh, paint a better picture here and make some technical analysis or some guesses on where the stock will go. And it's really this stupid simple. Goes up, has a resistance, goes down, has a support, starts to go up again. And now we know where our support line is and where our resistance line is. But now you're probably wondering, what about right here? It didn't go down. It broke through. Well, when it breaks through a resistance or if it breaks through a support, these two then switch in a sense. So once it broke through that old resistance, it becomes a new support line. Same goes true. Same is true if the stock, instead of going up, went down and broke through the support line, then the old support line would become a new resistance line. So let's jump over to the SPY and let's start, let's start uh, drawing some lines on it. I'll use uh, some nice neon hot pink so it's easy to see. But right now, if you look at the stock, well, if you look at the ETF, we're over here, we're experiencing some, uh, some choppy water, right? All the way back here, back in February, the market plummeted because the entire world is on lockdown. And then it bounced, and now it's bouncing back up. And now it's having some choppy water, and I think it will go back down. Why is that? Well, if we add a line, where the stock is right now at $280. And if we rewind back to the summer of 2019, we could see what looks to be a pretty strong support line. You could see this ETF bouncing at this support line. Of course, it's not perfectly accurate right here. It was at $281. Right here, it was at $283. And here is at $284. That's because this isn't, this isn't foolproof. This isn't an exact science. But it's to make some great educated guesses on what's going to happen to a stock or the market. Um, so instead of a line, picture more of a range right? You have to account for uh, some room for error. So maybe the range would be that wide, right? But we're just going to keep one line to keep things simple. If we go back in time a little bit more along this line, let's see. Oh, look, right here. So over here, it was a support. But right here, it looks like it was a resistance. And if we keep going back, you could see that that was true. Back in 2018, it looks like it dropped down and this became a strong resistance. And the market had a real hard time going above this resistance line. And all the way down, all the way back up, still had trouble with that resistance, started to roll back over, but then it finally broke through and became that support. So we could add in some more lines here. So if we go back to here, right now we're having some trouble. That's why I think we're going to go down. But let's add in 
another support resistance line right at the bottom, right? That was March 20th or March 23rd. And let's go back in time and see if that actually is a support line or if this, if the market just decided to stop at 218. It wasn't by random chance. It was probably a support line. So if we go all the way back in time, here we go. So it was an old resistance. As you see right here, the market had a lot of trouble trying to get above that. Let me just zoom in. You see that this was a very, very strong resistance, it looks like. The market had a lot of trouble trying to get above that. And finally, when it did, it became a support line. This was back in 2016. And we finally came back down to that support line. Now, this is good for not only long-term plays, trying to predict where the market's going to end up, when you should buy into a stock or an ETF, but we could also use support and resistance lines for things like day trading or swing trading. So that's more short-term plays. So let's go to how about the three minute chart. And if we zoom in to what's happening right now, the market's still open. It's only a little past 1.30. If we expand all of this, let's see if we could kind of paint a picture of what's happening today and if we could be day traders. So let's, uh, let's draw a line. We could even look back into the pre-market. Pre-market really doesn't tell us too much other than it's going up. So if we jump over here, let's see if we could kind of see some patterns forming, see if we could find some resistance and support lines. So I see one right now, right away, the very top right here. This kind of acted as a resistance. You could see the market went up, hit that resistance, started to go down, right? And it looks like this, you could almost say this looks like a support line. And We'll just use two lines. That's it. That's all we really need to kind of, uh, you know, predict what's going to happen. Goes up. It went past that resistance, right? Made a new high for the day. Started to go down, go down. And then right here, now if we were day traders and if we were looking at this and it was before 1130 a.m., we could think, hmm, we're hitting this old resistance, new support line. Maybe now would be a good time to buy in, thinking that the market will go up. Sure enough, again, it's not an exact science. It did go down a little bit more, but then it popped back up. So we would have bought in at, say, $282, popped all the way up to $283. Right there, that is a... $1 change, almost a $1 change. If you had 100 shares, that'd be 100 bucks in what? 39 minutes. Seems like a pretty good pay to me. But then as you see, what happens is it went back down, right? If we were smart day traders, we would have gotten out when it was over here, kind of forming a little channel. Looks like that there, this is new resistance. It went down and it broke down past that support line past this support line as well went all the way down to 278 started to bounce back bounce right past this support and oh look it's having trouble at this resistance line now it's starting to roll back over bouncing down now it's having trouble at this resistance so again there's there's really no predicting with 100 percent certainty where the market or where a stock will go looking at support and resistance lines but you could see you could make some pretty good bets off of this it's it's no surprise that the market stopped almost to a t actually i think it did this support line 
right there. It hit that support line we drew and it's starting to go back down. And I'm pretty sure this candlestick was still forming when we were uh, recording this. So it's not like I predicted that was going to happen. This, uh, you know, it's not like I knew that this was going to happen and I wanted to record this to show it to you. But if you rewind a couple of minutes, you'll see this candlestick was still forming and it's no surprise that it's starting to go back down because it didn't make it past this support line. But that's pretty much it. That's resistance and support lines in a nutshell. You can do it for short-term trading like this. Even though this was a very simple, oversimplified day trading example, it's still applied. That still could be a method you could follow if you want to try to day trade. And if we go out back to the daily chart or even a weekly chart, we can, uh, we can kind of make some guesses when would be a good time to uh, buy into the market or buy into a stock. And right now, because we established that this is a, uh, a pretty strong support and resistance line, as we can see, the stock market always happens to have trouble around this $280 range, whether it goes back down or it's choppy and then finally it's able to break through. This isn't a, this really isn't a place that I would particularly want to start to buy some stocks. I have about nine stocks that I'm ready to buy. I think they're great companies and they will continue to make a lot of money for decades to come, but I am not going to buy them until the market goes back down to maybe a lower support. If we could get back down to maybe this support, then I will buy in. Or if we really go back in time, there's an even stronger support. I don't know if the market will reach this point, but you know what? We'll go to a monthly chart so I can show you. This support right here, this old resistance line, this is our two previous crashes, the dot-com bubble and the housing market crash, 154. Will we, will we make it all the way down to 154? I don't think so, but it's very possible. And if it does, I'll be buying up a lot of stocks at that resistance line or support line.